Hey everyone, welcome back for episode three of season two of the Princes of Parma. When I left you, we played um, Sparta, no Slavia Prague in um, our first game in the Europa League. Since then, our fortunes have been mixed to say the least. A few individual performances have let us down. Um, let's touch on a couple. This game against Napoli, um, we went down to 10 men after 11 minutes and then Napoli scored in the 16th and then in the 88th. Obviously, that wasn't particularly helpful. Um, so we lost that 2-0. Atalanta, we were winning 2-1, uh, as you can see, up until about the 17th minute. And then uh, Ahmed Hosic misses a header for them to make it 2 all, And then, I, I can't even remember what this one was. I think this was just more poor defending, as you can see. Ahmed Hosic raising of 6.3. Petzela, 6.3. The one good thing that came out of this game, though, um, was this goal. This corner was a little ray of light in what ended up being a very, very miserable game, a miserable result. So we've got Tonali on the corner, plays it short to Nonto, nice bit of footwork past the defender, feeds it to Tonali, gets the ball, squares it across the box, Papetti with the goal. A lovely little short corner routine, and that's the first time I've actually scored from a short, like worked short corner like that, and it was really nice to see it pay off. Um, since then, we then... Beat Anderlecht 1-0, beat Empoli 2-0, we drew Crotone 2-all, this was an awful game, we were 2-0 down and then managed to pull it back to 2-all. Um, Krasnodar, as you can see, we won 3-0, Bologna, right again, um, had a man sent off, Bentaleb got sent off after about 30 minutes I think it was, let's see, 26 minutes, they then scored 12 minutes later and thankfully Nonto smashed one in from about 30 yards out to make it one or and it stayed that way. As you can see, XG was very low, very poor chance creation. Um, I would like to think that we would have done better had you not ended up with 10 men, but you never know. As you can see, Esposito did not have a great game either. Needless to say, I think I did substitute him off. Um, yeah, generally very poor. So then what we did was we mixed it up against Roma. Um, so we tried my inverted wing-backs formation. Um, now, it worked. It actually did work very well. Conti was not happy beforehand. Um, on the match preview screen, he was not happy about having to play in an unfamiliar position. Agman Hosic seems to have had a really poor game, but, you know, okay, yes, we conceded once. Um, so, you know, I don't see why. Yeah, Conti was not happy, but he actually ended up probably having his best rating of the season. Gold here is Mazzala. He set up both goals. First one was from here. He whipped it across this was In fact, you know what? I'll, let me let me just let me just show you the goals. So Roma took the lead. Ball in behind. Zaniolo crosses it in. Jacko gets above Papetti. Rises in between Papetti and Agnes Osic. Then pretty much straight from kickoff, Gold plays this all the way through to Esposito. Goal. And then uh, formation, well, not formation change, tactics change. I put Gold up into the number 10. And then he does that. Esposito scores. 2-1. Saw the game out. Lovely. Petzella seemed to have real, real joy just going down the wing and then cutting inside and playing these balls into the back post. Uh, Arezzo won a couple of headers at the back and he could have easily made it more. Um, so then, as you can see, yeah, 100% record so far in the Europa League. Not conceded either. So that leaves us currently nine points. Um, by my reckoning, if we win Krasnodar, depending on what happens in the Slavia Prague and Let game, we would only need a point from our second game of this round of fixtures against Prague. It should be um, at home to Prague. I think if we just get a point, we will go through. So, you know, can't really complain. Um, interestingly enough, considering our league form has been patchy to say the least, um, you know, we've got a nice 3-4-3. Three, three. Um, we're sitting 11th, but we're one win away from going up into the 16th, into 6th place on six, onto 16 points. Um, so, you know, a good run of form. We've actually got Milan next, but we've got a bit of a gap. And then we've got Prague and then we've got Juve. And then we've got some games here, another run of games, which should really be quite winnable. All the way up to Lazio in January, I'd like to think these could all be quite winnable games. Um 
so yeah, so tonight we're going to do Krasnodar, and then I'll get it forward uh, to Milan. We'll do that one, and then to be fair, I might I might well bring it back for the Juventus game because obviously we played Juventus on series um, in series one on episode two maybe, and lost one nil. So I'd be interested to see if we can maybe produce a better showing for for the cameras this time. Um, yeah, so um, let let's let's get going. So we've actually gone with the same setup as we did against Roma. I did debate changing it, but I figured, you know what? A, we're away from home. Let's stick with three at the back just to see if we can, you know, just keep that security going in the Europa League. But also, probably a good team because they're not a very good team um, to try and practice the, the formation against and the tactic against a bit more. Um, just in preparation for the league games. It just gives them more time just to, to practice and perfect how, how I want them to play with this system. I've got a feeling he was offside, yeah. I mean, great, great start. Like, the uh, the ball from Papetti was uh, was beautiful. He's playing as a libero, so we have Sistana as a just a cover, uh, standard defender. Papetti as an attacking libero, Valenti as a ball-playing defender. And then Pizzella and Conti both as inverted wing-backs. Pizzella's on attack and Conti is on support. Then you have Capaldo as a BBM. He's been he's been pretty solid, to be fair, that free signing we got from Boca. Uh, Gold as a Mazzala. Nonto I've been playing as a shadow striker. Um, I brought him on and played him in that role against Krasnodar in the first fixture, and he scored like, not long after coming on. And then he also smashed that one in against um, Bologna. So... Well, and like the quality beating um, Slavia Prague. So if we win this, then we're already qualified. There's a great ball from Papetti into Esposito. Lovely little dink. Lovely little thing over there. He he was a bit um, hit and miss with his form, as I'm sure you saw in some of those other games. He was having like 6.2 ratings. Um, since then, he's really come on. Uh, he scored in the two all against Grattori. He missed an absolute sitter. One on one, hit it straight at the keeper and then scored a first time rocket with his weaker foot from outside the box. So go figure. But anyway, he, he's really come on now. Um, as I'm sure a lot of you knew he would. Some of you might think, oh, you're getting a sponsor We know he's great. But... Yeah, we know he's great, and he's Italian. So, you know, it's a bit of a no-brainer, really. And Reto's been hit and miss. He's only got about two or three goals so far this season. Um, he had the cheek to come ask me for a new, the, a new contract. I was like, I know you've been here, like, coming up to a year now, but you've, only, you've been out on loan, and you've only just started playing for us this time, like this season. And you've not done that great. So don't come asking for a new contract at this stage when you, you've got to earn it. And he seemed quite happy with that, to be fair. I kind of said to him, you know, nothing's given out for free. You earn your place and he was like, okay, I'll show you what I can do. So if that spurs him on to start getting some goals, I'll be happy. Quite comfortable so far. Oh, I shouldn't have said that because I'll go and score now, won't they? Rocky move. Yeah, so that's my fault. <laughs> Shouldn't have said it. A nice worked goal, and that's the first goal we conceded in the competition. Yeah, the reason we're not playing um, Ahmed Hosage is because he's suspended, in case you're wondering, in case you're wondering why Sistan is in. Valente is quite perfect for this because he's left-footed, so he suits playing on the left side of that. Um, Esposito with another chip, and this time with the assist from Arezzo, pretty much straight after Dave's just scored. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, he, he suits playing as that ball-playing defender really nicely in this style, in this like tactic because he's left-footed, so it works really well. Esposito just thinking the keeper. Come on, mate, he's got kids. He's done it twice. Well, I mean, he might have kids. How old is he? Safanov? 
No, 23. Well, you never know, you might do. But at that age, you know, well, maybe less likely. The good thing about this for um, formation tactic style is, oh, look at that. Got a, it should have been a goal. Um, is because it's a bit more of a possession based style rather than a pressing style, it's not as intense, maybe, um, which therefore hopefully just saves some of the players. Um, I do think part of the reason for my poor league form. Was I was doing a, you know, having to do quite a bit of squad rotation and, you know, maybe just trying to iron it out and find the right balance in that. Um, maybe just sort of derailed the team a little bit in time, at times, and they were a little bit, um, what's the word, should we say, um, out of sync with each other, um, a little bit unsettled. And I do wonder if that, you know, did cause us to struggle again against some of those those teams which really we should have been should have been beating. Um so you know hopefully this formation may be a bit a little bit less intensity will hopefully save the players a little bit more uh, in the long run. Uh, and then we kind of pick and choose when we want to go pressing and then we can you know dip back into a more sort of patient possessing game. Um yeah, I thought I'd bring Tenali on. He's been out injured for about five weeks, so I thought it's probably a good point to bring him on last 30 minutes in this game. Hopefully he'll just close it out. Great save from Sepe. Great save. Oh yeah, obviously Slavia Prague equalised. Either way, as things stand, we'll still be eight points clear with um, two games to go. Um, so we'll still qualify. It just increases the chances of us qualifying top if uh, if Anderlecht don't win. Um, we've got Prague next, so basically as long as we as long as we don't lose, I think we should be relatively confident in in going through. Um, because I'd like to think we'd do okay against Anderlecht at home. Oh, I need to make some more changes here. Capaldo struggling. All my midfielders are. I kind of, out of principle, didn't bring Ben to in because I said after sending off that he was going to have to think about what he'd done. <laughs> like a naughty child. Um, I want to take Capaldo off, but I don't need to take him off for. So we brought Balo on and we have put <sighs> Papetti as a anchor man in the midfield. Um, just to try and get Capaldo off, just to save him. I mean, it doesn't matter too much because... We've got a bit of a gap. Oh, Tonali's picked up another knock. We've got a bit of a gap until we have to play um, Milan. So it doesn't matter too much, really. You know, I'll just give them some rest days. No, he seems to have recovered easily enough from whatever happened to him. Ah, oh, Conti, that was a great chance. Oh, he was offside. Or El Shawar, El Sharawi. Sorry, should I say he was offside? Oh, and the left have taken the lead again. Okay, no big deal. And that should hopefully close things out. Let's uh, shut up shop a little bit. Slow the slow the game down now. Nice, that's lovely. Right, corner, 94 minutes. Let's wind it down. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I know I'm not going to start singing Frozen before anyone asks. You do not want to hear me sing, believe me. 
That's fine, because that take all the time in the world, mate. All the time in the world. That should be the game. 2-1 away from home. 100% record maintained in the Europa League. Excellent, excellent. 2-1, lovely. And it's more match practice than the tactic. And we won with it. So, um, that in itself is really, really encouraging. Um, two games in a row now we've used that tactic and we've managed to win both. Um, just good, just for, you know, helping with the famili familiarity. Because if, if the team was struggling, obviously I'd be less inclined to, to use it, but they're doing quite well. Arsenal, Gladbach, one or two own goals. What are the odds? Oh, Anderlecht won it in the 93rd minute. Lazio due to all. Everton beat Celtic 2-0. One new toffees. Um, what else? Lille. Lille won 4-1. Lille have got um, Olivier Giroud playing for them. Pesciktas lost. Okay, so nice comfortable 2-1 win. The thing was Tenali pulled his hamstring. Um, I think that, that wasn't what he was injured for last time. He was injured with a twisted ankle. Um, so maybe I just need to just ease it up with him coming back to training. Um, yeah, training and then games. Um, so yeah, what we'll do is we've got 16 days to the Milan game. I'll get us through to that and then I will see you for that one. So we are back for the Milan game. I've had to move into my bedroom because for some reason the light doesn't want to work again, which is really annoying. Um, so yeah, we're back with the Milan game. We've had just over two weeks off. Um, and we have gone um, with this team. Now, I've made... I've swapped the wing-backs to normal. I guess they're normal conventional side. Pazella is suspended, which is really frustrating. He is kind of a big part of how this system works because he's really comfortable drifting in as an inverted wing-back into this area. So we just mixed it up for now. We've kept the same tactic, like tactical style. We've just dropped the uh, the defensive line down to standard um, just to try and counter the fact that we are playing Milan, who are currently sat in second. Um, we've taken Nonto out and we've brought Gold in just for someone just to drop into that hole a little bit deeper just to pick the ball up. We've gone for Brugman on a, a defensive role and the playmaker there. Um Otherwise, the team is kind of, I guess, pretty much as you would expect. Zagaritis has come in for the uh, suspended Pizzella. Um, but as you have a stick with this, we're not going back to the 4 5 1 or the 4 3 3. We're going to leave it at this for now because it seems to have served us quite well lately. So here we go, home to Milan. As you can actually see, our recent form isn't too bad. Draw 1 1 1. Draw 1 1 2. So not too bad. That does take into account. Um, Yoga League form now. Not a bad idea, just a little bit over here. Yeah, he is right. I was just checking because he hit that first time with his left foot. So I was just thinking, wait a second, if I read something wrong, and is he actually uh, actually left footed? Oh, if he's onside, then he scores. No, he was offside. Great recovery and defending from wherever that was at the back. Was it Tamori? Saying that Milan have had four shots and one on target, but every highlight has been with us in possession, really. Oh, what a save. He tipped that onto the post. That was too close. Yeah, I think Milan bought David Silva for like five mil or something like that. Which is a bit of a weird one. Had a shot yet, this isn't good enough. Well, 
Oh, what a pass. Seppi was off his line. That was a, oh, atrocious. Of course, it would be Zlatan's first goal as well, wouldn't it? First goal of the season after what? 10, 11 games is against us. Come on, whip it in, yes. Well, first shot. Better than that. Better than waiting for the second half. Great pass. What a goal. What a goal. Worked it forward really quickly as well, which is nice. Great pass from Inglesi. Touch. Bang. Top corner. Love it. Good delivery at the back post. Come on, no. Good tackle. As it goes up for throwing, I don't mind. Half time, one all against second in the league. I will take that, I think. Anybody um, watch Brentford Arsenal? Um, I watched the first half and then started recording this in the second half. But oh my god! Uh, yeah, Brentford Arsenal. Classic Arsenal is all I'll say. I think we need to increase the. Uh, we put the tempo up a little bit higher and uh, increase our line of engagement. Um, I'll leave it at that for now. It might be subs time. Subs time. Yeah, so what we've done is we've gone to the gate and press now. Gone back to the 4-5-1. I've had Hosage having another poor game. Dennis Mann's picked up a knock already. Great. Oh, that's 3 1. That's the, I think that was Akman Hosic again, you know. Poor header out. He's in like a spell of poor form. I think he's going to have to get dropped for a bit. Let's see. Yeah. So he headed straight down to Cassier, who smashes it in. Oh dear. So we've, what we've done is we brought Nonto on. Who pretty much straight away is getting involved, to be fair to him. I'm making a lot of changes. Okay, bit of a gift. That is where that falls down when stuff like that happens. I mean, yeah, it's against Milan. So our next league game is against Juventus. I was thinking what I might do actually is um, do the like the reverse Juventus game 
and maybe do um, like our last or second to last. I don't know, second to last Europa League game is coming up. It might be a bit too soon. Um, let's have a look. So, we've got Slavia Prague, then we've got Juventus away. Yeah, so we'll do the home game against Juventus, which is in April. Definitely do that one. We've got Sassuolo and Elect. Okay, you know what? Maybe bring it back. We'll bring it back for Monza, because that should be a decent game for us. And we'll do Udinese or Hellas Verona just coming into January, and we'll see where we're at with transfers. So, I shall see you on the 18th of December for the Fiorentina game or the Monza game, yeah. Uh, around there, by which point we should have our Europa League qualification all sorted. I mean, we're qualified, but obviously, C is going to come top. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know where you think we're going to finish in the Europa League um, and let me know where you think we're going to be sat in the table. By the time I next see you. So we're currently 11th with a game. We'll have a game in hand over a lot of these teams because we missed a week. So Sampdoria, Fiorentina, um, Inter, Napoli, etc. are all playing later. And then there's a load of teams playing tomorrow. So we'll all have a game in hand over them. So yeah, we're six points off the Europa League spots again. But, you know, it only takes a few results to go our way and we will just get straight back up there. So I'm optimistic. It's early days. 11 games down. Not even, um, you know, a third of the way through the season yet. So we've got time to turn this around. I'm confident we will. Um, I think New Year will be a lot easier because the, the games um, should be hopefully a little bit more manageable. Hopefully. We'll see because obviously the Italian Cup will get thrown in there as well. Um, but I think I've really struggled with the rotation side, not necessarily rotating the team, which I think, you know, we know we need to do is actually just the, the you know, that rotation, just the players gelling. You know, we've not got that level of depth that a lot of other teams have around us. Um but yeah, it'll take time. But I'm confident I'm confident of a good showing. I'm sure we'll be back up in the European spots in no time. Um be obviously see if we can get even higher. Um but I'll still take any European spot. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. let me know what you think below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, do drop it a like and uh, I'll see you next time. Take it easy.